Right, Simon, thanks for joining us and giving up your time. Uh, I know you've got the small matter of a playoff final to look forward to on Monday. How does it feel, first and foremost, to be potentially 90 minutes away from promotion? Yeah, uh, a bit surreal, to be honest. Um, obviously, with everything with the, um, the the coronavirus and I suppose when all that was happening, obviously it's still happening, but when we were going through that in the in the lockdown, it looked like the season was, was kind of finished. Um, we were kind of waiting every day through through Twitter, through reports of what's going to be happening with, with the league. It looked like the league was obviously getting um, was getting cancelled and shut down and then we didn't know how that left us with the points per game, the weighted points per game uh, and so on. So it was very, very strange. And then I think the, the, the moment it dawned on, I think us as a team and, and the manager and stuff was when the championship got announced that that will come back and play the full season out. Um, so that's when we kind of thought these pretty much a 99% chance that they will finish our, our playoffs and uh, the League 2 playoffs. So, yeah, I suppose from overnight, really, a couple of months back, it kind of think you're not playing till next season to kind of thinking, right, well, we're kind of pretty much guaranteed the, the playoffs. So, we're, we're in them. I think if they were only us and maybe Fleetwood who were guaranteed, um, whichever way you go with the, the, the weighted points per game or um, the points per game. So, yeah, surreal feeling to be honest, and then straight back down to training, and yeah, I think we'll be training maybe six, seven weeks to, to this moment, and yeah, finally here now. And obviously a quick turnaround as well between the semi-final and the final after that long wait for the season to restart. Was there was there any time for celebration after after the semi-final against Portsmouth, or is there still a feeling there's a job to do? Yeah, it's a bit of both, isn't it, to be honest. I mean, you can have a little bit of celebration. You're happy for a couple of hours after the game. You get a lot of text message, phone calls, that kind of congratulating you that you're through to, obviously, the final. But, yeah, a bit, bit weird with, um, like you said, it's you've kind of still not done too much yet. You've you've still got a game to go. And like you said, you at the end of the day, you're 90 minutes away from, um, yeah, from being in the championship. So, it's um, yeah, the pressure's really on for, for both teams, I suppose. I know the manager said there were a few tears in the dressing room, not naming names, but it's been some season so far, hasn't it? I think so. I thought I think if you could, somebody would have said it would be Oxford Wickham at the start of the season and the playoff League One playoff final. I don't think you'd have too many takers to be honest. Um, I think our season last last season we were we were poor really. We had a really good run at the end of the season, the last ten to twelve games to really pull us away from the relegation zone. It kind of um, masked probably the season that we had it was a poor season um, I think we finished mid-table overall um, so yeah to get the um, to get to where we are today to be like you said in a playoff a league one playoff final is massive for the club and I've said it before you're probably not going to get a better chance to, um, to to get promoted and I'm sure both teams are thinking that um, how big of the chance it actually is to be in the championship from a personal point of view as well, to have played your part and played a big role in saving a penalty and things like that, how what does that mean to you as well, personally? Yeah, no, it's nice. It's like it's, it's it's strange because you've you've kind of got through that leg, and myself, I've never really been involved in the playoffs of, of this kind of magnitude and the, the importance of this. So you kind of get through the the, the two games, but. You've always got in the back of your mind that there's still one more game, the probably the biggest game that you're going to play in to go. So, yeah, if, if you could say that something like that's going to happen on Monday night again, what, what I did the other night, I'd uh, yeah, I'd slap your hands off. Has it crossed your mind that it might go all the way? Because goalkeepers are often the heroes when it comes to finals, aren't they? Yeah, no, I think so. I think that I think if you watch the two the two games that we played in the the, the two Portsmouth games, they weren't great games of football. You've got two teams that don't want to lose every cage and not too many chances um, so it wouldn't surprise me if it's like that again on Monday night um, very cagey like I said not too many chances so yeah it'll be a tight game I'm sure and um, I think it's one that everybody knows could literally go either way Are you the kind of person that gets nervous before these big games or do you feel confident going into it? No I'm I've, I've quite a confident person uh, I said I'm 31 now so I'm not kind of a young lad coming through. I've played quite a lot of games in my career now, quite a lot of big games. Um, so I'm going to try to treat it as any any other game. Um, it's quite strange saying that with, I said, with the no fans and stuff like that. Sometimes in the Portsmouth games, the home and away games, you kind of got to remind yourself the importance of the game. Um, so yeah, it's, it kept, they kind of feel a bit like um, a pre-season friendlies almost. With like I said at the Kassam and at Portsmouth, it feels like an important friendly game. As weird as it sounds, with there being no fans there, so yeah, I don't know. It'll be on uh, Monday night with the Wembley, I suppose, because you're at Wembley, you, you know it's kind of important anyway. But it's something that like I said the lads are, are really happy that we've made it that far. Um, 
So you could look at that the other night as a flip of the coin. You went through on the penalties. It's just pot luck. So we've we've done well to get this far, and hopefully we can finish the job. Yeah, a few people have said it's almost the battle of the underdogs on Monday. Does it feel, in some ways, that this is the opportunity to get to the championship? Yeah, def- I I think so personally. Yeah, I think like I said, the, it seems to be every season League One's getting stronger, and you've got bigger teams coming into League One, dropping down, and like I said, you've got big teams in there now: Sunderland, Ipswich, Portsmouth. You've probably got a couple more big ones coming down next season. Um, so it's a little bit like the Luton one last season. Nobody really expected Luton to get promoted. Um, so I'm sure. At the start of this season, realistically, no would have, nobody would have really expected uh, Oxford or Wickham to get promoted. So whoever goes up, it'll be um, a great achievement. Yeah, and just on your opponents, they made it to the final in style, didn't they? Six goals over the two legs. So what are you expecting from them on Monday? Yeah, we know kind of how they how they play. They play a little bit different to us. We kind of like to try pass it and stuff like that. Very nice, and they've got their own way of playing. So we know it's going to be a challenging game. We know they've they've got lads who work uh, really hard and. Really hard runners and hard work is a physical, tough game. So it will be definitely a, a, a tough game. And like I said at the start, I think it'll be really tight and, and really close. I think I'm right in saying you were injured, were you, for the for the league game against Wickham uh, earlier this season? What, what do you remember yeah. about watching on from the sidelines? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I got injured. I did my knee. I think I did my uh, something in my knee. So I was out for maybe uh, I think uh, six weeks. I think I missed six games of the season through from my knee injury. But yeah, no, I think it was um, quite a strange game. I think they had a player sent off maybe after ten minutes. Um, I think we won one nil in the end. So it was quite quite hard to judge. Like I say, when somebody goes down to ten minutes, completely sways the game off. Um, but yeah, I think that's when they were really high flying. I think they might have been leading the league by maybe eight to ten points we were flying away with it and then obviously after Christmas they dropped off a little bit um, but yeah fair play to them like I said it's uh, it's Wickham who, who were kind of um, odds, odds favourites to kind of be lower down just as we were just as Oxford were um, so it's two teams like you said two underdog teams kind of going at a, a yeah, league one uh, player final Do you think there's something added to this final as well the fact that they're only down the road from, from you lot as well? Um, maybe if the fans were there, but no, not too, not too much to be honest. I mean, it's just the game of a, a massive game for, for two 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 clubs that are, you would say not the biggest if you compare them, like you said, to the the Portsmouths, the Sunderlands, and and stuff like that. So it's two two very good teams, of fo- uh, two very good teams who will probably play different t- styles of football. But like I said, I'm sure it will make for a, a great game and, like I said, a, a very tight game. Yeah, you mentioned the two different styles of play there. Do you feel that because you're expected to have more of the ball on the day, that could play into your hands, especially on a big pitch like Wembley? Yeah, we we'll hope so. Yeah, um, but I suppose when you've got the ball, it depends what depends what you do with it, doesn't it? You don't well, kind of want to just keep it for the sake of keeping it. Um, you've got to do something with the ball when you've got it. So yeah, you can look at it both ways. You can keep the ball and tie them out and. We'll, we'll we'll try do that, but like you said, if it depends who's the best with the ball, who makes the most happen, who creates the most chances, and at the end of the day, I suppose it doesn't really matter who has the ball for the longest time. It's whatever the score says at the end of the game. That's all that matters. Absolutely, we saw that in the semi-finals, didn't we? Um, you've experienced Wembley before. Just talk us through that. What was that like? Yeah, so that was with uh, Oxford as well. That was in the uh, Checker Trade final. We played um, Coventry. Um, so that was good. We we ended up losing on the day two one, but that was a, a great experience. I think it was like pretty much a sellout there at Wembley. Um, so a lot of people have said, like I said, with the fans, it'll be a lot different, which I do think it will because like I said you can't really get play at better places than Wembley when it's a, a a full house. So it will be very surreal and surreal feeling that, like I said, it should really be full and and uh, and packed. It's kind of like the other the, the other night. I mean. We played obviously at Oxford at the Kassam and there's nobody there and people were saying that if, if we'd have won and there were fans there, there's normally a pitch invasion when you get through to the Wembley. So yeah, I suppose as a player you're missing out on these on the this stuff that's the the, the create memories, but I'm sure in, in in years time when when you look back at it, I'm sure you you won't really think about that. I'm sure you just remember if you got promoted or you didn't. Yeah, and that, that experience of Wembley that you had, despite the result, do you feel almost a responsibility now as one of the older members of the squad to to guide the younger players who might not have played at Wembley before through through this final. Yeah, I think so. I think we've got quite a lot of um, young lads in our team. I think there's me and uh, James Henry who started the other day, and Jamie Mackey, the, the, the striker. These kind of three, three or four older lads that 
yeah, like you said, it will have to help the the younger lads. But these younger lads are very, very good footballers who have come from the top teams in, in the Premiership who have dropped down to try to play first team football, which they have with obviously with Oxford and seems to be a lot of them that are doing very, very well, attracting uh, interest from other clubs. Uh, they're definitely good enough and um, I'm sure nothing too much phases them uh, and I'm sure they'll, they'll be fine on Monday night. You'll know just as much as anyone really what an achievement like this would mean to the club and the city. Just how big would it be? Yeah, I mean, like I said, Oxford at the, at the start of the season... You, not many people would give you a chance, but like you could flip it again. You could say a Wickham at the start of the season, nobody would give you much of a chance. So it's the same for both clubs, I think, which I, I do kind of look at it as very, a little bit of a, like you said, a strange final. We've, we've, you've got to admit it, the underdogs of, of, of the clubs in, that, in our league. So I think it's great for, for both clubs, two great clubs who have made such a, come so far this season, massive achievement for both clubs. And yeah, hopefully for us, we've come so far and worked so hard. Um, It'd be just obviously the icing on the cake now to to win and go up. In terms of your time at Oxford, this is obviously your second spell. Do you feel like you've proven a point in a way, going away, coming back, and now cementing your place, reaching a, a playoff final? I think when when I first joined Oxford, I was very young, maybe nineteen, something like that. So I was kind of a young lad making my way in the game, and yeah, I ended up staying at Oxford for a season, and then I left because I wasn't playing, and I kind of wanted to back, back myself to go play first team football so I dropped down into non-league into Halifax Town in the in the conference north to try prove myself to kind of took a bit of a risk to be honest to drop right down to try build my way back up um, so yeah no looking back luckily it paid off with like I said trying to get games and trying to get in the shot window paid off to, to come back to Oxford as, to become kind of the number one and yeah this will be um, this is the end of my fourth season here now so I've been here quite a while it'll be the fifth season next the start of next season um, which yeah it's flown by and yeah I think I've um, played quite a lot of games now and um, yeah enjoyed my time here yeah and you have played in the championship in the in the middle of all that as well what just how good is the level um, the, the standard of football in the championship yeah I think for for a goalkeeper looking, looking, it's it's different because you might not get as much to do. But when you when you do something, you've got to be at the top of your game because you know this the, the quality does go up. Um, like I said you talk about big teams being in League One, but you could you could say that obviously massively in the Championship. There's some massive, massive teams um, in the Championship. So I think whoever do whoever does go up, Boxford or Wickham, it's it's going to be a very um, interesting season for them next year, playing some big boys. Literally, like I said, you've got three also coming down from the Premiership. So it's it's kind of the games that you want to play in the, against the big teams and. Like I said, you could literally name 12, 15 massive teams in the Championship. It's you could People call it a, a little bit behind the Premiership, and I do agree with that. Like I said, you've got half the teams in the Championship that, that could easily be in the Premiership and, and, and hold their own. So, yeah, it's um, a very challenging league. So, for someone like Oxford, like I said, even Wickham again, to be in that, it's, it's a massive achievement. Yeah, people love that sort of fairy tale story, don't they? And what, what would it mean to you personally as well to be back at that level? Yeah, that's where I kind of want to go. Like I said, it's, I was at Blackburn for three years, playing the championship there with Blackburn. I loved my time there. And then I kind of wanted to get some first-team football, kind of um, guaranteed playing and back myself to play. So, like I said, I've been at Oxford for, for quite a long time now. And my, my goal was at the start to, to get back in the championship with Oxford. Um, and, yeah, like I said, it kind of seems like now is you're not really going to get many better chances than this, to be honest, to, to, to get there. Um it's been a surreal season with everything that's happened. Obviously, we're getting stopped with with nine, ten games to go. So we got the chance to to finish it, and now we've come this far. It would, um, yeah, it'd be great to uh, to get there. I just want to talk about the the manager quickly as well and the influence he's had on the squad. What's he like to work for? Yeah, no, he's great. He's uh, a good, really good man manager. Very good at talking to his players, even singly and in, in groups. Gets a lot of good information. Know exactly what we're going to do. Quite drilled in what we do likes to pass the ball, um, likes to keep the ball moving. Um, so, yeah, I think everybody knows what they're getting with him. Um, and, yeah, just a nice guy. I think sometimes in football, I've had managers where, yeah, you could take them all even. But to be fair to, to our gaffer, he seems a, a really good guy as well. And I think a lot of people respect that. He wants the same as us, um, wants us to get up. And like he says, Ruth, it's kind of now or never. I said, I'm 31 now. This is probably the first time in my career that I've had this opportunity. Um, and he's just been reiterating that it doesn't come around very often. You could be 20, 22, 25. This might be the 
the, the kind of first and last time that this opportunity might come along. Um, so, yeah, just to kind of take it and give it your best shot. Yeah, we spoke to the manager earlier in the height of lockdown, really, and he was talking about the importance of checking in with players, making sure they're all right. It's obviously been a strange and, and difficult time, but um, how have you how have you managed? What have you had any sort of coping mechanisms? Have you stayed busy and and focused on your football? Yeah, I mean, it's um, like I said, I think we're, I'm the same as everybody at the start of the lockdown. It was quite nice to have a bit of time. Obviously, I've got a missus and two kids. So I, I love being with the family and the kids. Um, it was great being with that, but. Like I said, right at the start, when you get the inkling that you might be coming back to football and the, the playoffs might be there, you kind of mind your mindset changes very quickly. To it's um, yeah, we're back. We're kind of we're, we're going to be back in. I think because nobody, to be honest, knew what was going on when we was coming back. If we was coming back, how we'll finish the season. You could look at the you could look at Twitter or wherever you want to look every day, and there'd be a different story about what's going to happen. Um, so I think to, the uncertainty for the players and stuff like that was was strange, but it's like I said, one of them. You just keep yourself fit, and we've been having kind of um, Zoom sessions with um, with a short with our fitness coach at Oxford, kind of three four times a week. So all the lads have kind of been keeping in shape. Um, and then I think we came back very very early, to be honest, um, <coughs> a lot earlier than. Um, a couple of the other teams so it was uh, yeah I like to think we were quite fit and, and quite in shape Have you found time to watch the football you know with family life as well have you got a, a good setup at home for watching the games and things like that? Uh, to be honest I'm not you'd be surprised but I don't watch too much football to be honest um, I kind of um, I'm more of a golf man I like, like watching my golf and stuff like that so I'm kind of one of them that likes to switch off a little bit from football um, I watch it here and there but I wouldn't yeah I wouldn't make a point of of uh, of watching it too much. It's just been nice to, like I said, spend some time with the family, the misses, the kids, the two kids. And they're only young. They're only two and six. So to spend some time with them. And yeah, like I said, when you get told you're going back into football, your mindset does change and you kind of get switched on that you've got pretty much two or three games to, to get into the championship, which is very strange because like you say, if you go from having three months off it, you kind of get chucked back in massively at the deep end, whereas I think the championship is a little bit different. Where obviously they've got nine games, so you can kind of find your feet a little bit. With us, it's very, very quick, very soon. It's kind of all or nothing. Um, yeah, I suppose that's what the playoffs are. But like I said, when you've had a three month break, it's probably longer than any pre season, anything like that. So yeah, to get back in the swing of things, it's uh, it's definitely been uh, interesting with, like I said, the, the goalkeeping sessions and stuff, getting your eye back in uh, and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'd like to think it's finally come back just in time, yeah. Yeah, and obviously all this means no fans at Wembley on Monday, which is something we've touched on already. But what would your message be to them ahead of the final? No, I think I've seen the... Um, you've seen all the fans watch it on the uh, the, the home game when we was uh, at the Kassam. There was obviously a bit behind the goal on the big screen. I've seen some of them, I think be surprised how many people that watch it around Oxford and how many fans obviously rooting for us um, so no it's great obviously everybody will be watching from home we know that we know how important the game is um, so yeah we'll give it as best shot to kind of um, like I said just to play 100% and hopefully whatever happens if it's a bad game a good game I don't think nobody's bothered as long as you win and you get promoted that's like I said in, in a couple of years time that's all anybody thinks about well, thank you for your time. I think all that's left to say is good luck for Monday. Um, thanks again, and we'll, we'll see you there. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, mate. Thanks, Simon. Appreciate it. Take okay, care. Mate. Thanks, mate. No problem. Bye-bye.